You're in a campaign right now against Sheila Jackson Lee, Texas 18th. Um, obviously a very blue district. Let's talk about your policies. However, I was going through your policies before you hopped on my stream and we're going to talk uh, through them, I suppose. I was a little confused by your policies page. So I figured you could clarify some things for me. So uh, for instance, right, you mentioned uh, cost of living increases. You wanted to address inflation, gas price, and food costs. What are your thoughts on the Inflation Reduction Act that got passed uh, about a month ago? Well, let me tell you, the Inflation Reduction Act is actually an increased inflation act. Let's be realistic. Uh, and on top of that, then they put the, 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 you know, the loan forgiveness. So actually, all it's going to do is to keep on increasing inflation. Uh, what they did is change the name to the Green New Deal and, and call it the Inflation Reduction Act to once again lie to the people. And this is what the Democrats need to stop doing. Lying to the people, tell the truth, and, and stop the spending. Because every uh, act and every bill they'll sign is all about spending mm -hmm. more money. Well, I've got a question. So you're saying the IRA is increasing inflation because it's spending money is what you're saying. Well, you know, inflation, it's, uh, it's a combination of many things. We have already the high cost of oil because they stop all drilling and they stop the Keystone pipeline. Uh, once the gas goes up, everything goes up. Then we have a shortage of products, as you know. Then if there is less products, prices goes up. Then yeah. we have the, 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 the expenditure. You know, inflation is a cost of everything. So we need to stop expenditure. Yeah. We need to start drilling. We need to restart the Keystone Pipeline. And, and, and you know, the, the shortest of products is also the after effect of the pandemic. So we need to actually put money. That's where we need to put money to <laughs> restart the economy and to start producing locally. So we are not depending on other countries. Like right yeah. now, the cars are going off the roof because we don't have chips. Because why? Well, we're yeah. in the hands of the Chinese. So well, but, Carmen, I, you, but I feel like that's those are reasons why you should love the IRA and the chips bill that Biden passed. Number one, the IRA uh, increases oil drilling rights. I mean, I talked to my buddies in the oil industry. They actually love the IRA because of how much increased rights for leasing they get because of the IRA. And then the chips bill was uh, subsidizing domestic manufacturing of chips. I mean, shouldn't those be things? I mean, you mentioned the chip shortage. I mean, I feel like you should like some of those things that Biden did. Well, but some of those are correlated to just give money to uh, a small amount of people. And then the problem is, yeah, they can drill, but then we need to stop the regulation and reduce the regulations that are, yeah, you're going to start drilling, but there is so much regulation that is not going to affect the price reduction. And that's one of the things that Donald Trump did is he really tackled, you know, the regulations. It is mm -hmm. cheaper. That's why people have to go outside of the United States to build things yeah. and, 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 and have their workers because it is cheaper to build and to do anything in other countries than in the United States because of the regulations. So uh, that, that's problems that, yeah, it makes people believe like, yes, sure, but then you are forcing the oil industry to spend certain money, the green energy, then you are forcing them into so many regulations that increase the price. Yeah. So, you know, we're into these, you know, circle things that is getting yeah. us nowhere. Well, you know, one of the things the IRA did was put a price on methane pollution, right? So say, you know, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to release methane into the air, you've got to pay a price to do so. Um, is that something that you can support? I, I To me, as a, as a regular citizen, as a, as a policy thinker, you know, I like the idea of putting a price on pollution. Is that something that you think you could support? Well, let me tell you, we already are the country with the least pollution uh, uh, around the world. Uh, I was in a recent... Uh, conference of energy people, and actually we're on the negative. It's why do we keep on doing that and not holding the other countries accountable for the, produce, the pollution they are creating? India, China, you know, you keep on punishing uh, people in the United States. Oh, so, oh we're going to give you a price. You know, it's stop the line and start, you know, making accountable the people that are really polluting the planet.
So it sounds like you might support what the Canadians did. What the Canadians did was they put a price on carbon and carbon equivalents, but then they also said, hey, if you're polluting a bunch of stuff in order to produce goods, we're going to put a price on your goods that we're importing, and that puts international pressure on other countries to adopt climate solutions. Does that sound like something you'd support? No, I'm, I will never align with the Canadian. How about making it easy for people <laughs> He's here. Well, Ted Cruz you know, is a Canadian. You align with him. I feel like you got to align no, with Canadians no, sometimes. No, because they're saying, oh, we're going to put a price on the... No, how, how about helping people to, to produce in the United States? You know, That's and, what Biden and, did, though. You know, the IRA right, and the, the CHIPS Act. It, it subsidizes the domestic manufacturing. But, 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 do you see any difference? Is it doing anything? Because the, the regulations are so big that, yeah, we're going to give you this, but the regulations are so much that people cannot do it. People, well, it, 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 it takes... I mean, even if you had no regulation, though, Carmen, it would take a, a ton of time to build a huge chip manufacturing plant. You'd, you'd agree with me on that, I assume. I have to agree with you on that. So we're, we're, we're late in the game here. We should have never have put ourselves, you know, in the, in, in the hand, you know, at the mercy of the Chinese people. That's the reality. And now here we are at the, at the last minute trying to solve the problem. And it's going to take a while mm. to, to, to solve it. And uh, that's something that the United States, being the great nation we are, should have foreseen before it happened. Right. But it sounds like you would say, though, you would say all else equal, the, the Joe Biden Chips Act. It sounds like you'd like that. It just in and of itself. Why do we need an act to build chips in the United States when we should be just building it? You know, this is the biggest lie. Why do we have to have a knack to build ships? Why we were not building it from before? You know, this is all political games and word games to make people believe. We don't need an act to build ships. Why we were not doing it? We, United States is the technology, is the country recognized for technology. You know, so it's, it's you know, oh, now we're going to give federal money to Nancy Pelosi's husband, to, to go build ships. Well, we were not doing it and we were incentivated for doing it. So you're, so you're saying this the government should... Problem. So you're saying the government should make, uh, what, businesses build chips or something, not incentivize them? They should no, just no, make no, them? No, no, no. I'm, I'm a believer that the government should not be involved in any of this. Every time the government gets involved, things go bad and it's socialism. But creating an act, you know, the company should be building, you know, every time we get the government, this is the, this is the problem. The government got involved in this. There is not going to be a good solution out of this. This is just going to be certain people making an insane amount of money of our taxpayer money instead of having companies building and making the chips without the, with the government upside. I'm a great believer in small government. Yeah. I think your camera turned off. Um, so maybe turn turn it back yeah. on if you can. Um, oh, okay. I, no, you're good. I was just going to say that, you know, that's fair. Look, I, I think that even from, from liberals to, to conservatives, I think we can agree we want government to be as small as possible. Nobody wants too big a government. But when it comes to certain things in the economy, right, sometimes the government can correct markets uh, that do bad things. For instance, that's what I mentioned when it comes to pollution, right? It's good for the government to put a price on pollution because if you can pollute for free, that's a cost that everyone has to bear but that the individual the companies profit the, from. But we are the country with the least pollution. Why do we keep on banging and, and punishing the American people when we are the country that is doing best in but this. When you, when you say least pollution, do you mean like emissions per capita? I mean, we have more pollution aggregately and per capita than many other countries. That's not true. In the, that, you know, it's look at China, look at India, and they're not held accountable. And every time we, they, they make any decision to say, oh, it's the United States. So, you know, that's not true. That is just a narrative. And we need to start telling the truth to the people of because United, listen, I'm going to give you a simple example. When I moved okay. to Houston in 1991, okay, the East area of time, well, town was an area where because of it's close to the industrial area, it was an area where, you know, smell was a problem. There was a lot of lung diseases in the area. And what had happened in these last 31 years is the truth is the lung diseases in the area has gone down and the smell is, is gone. 
because United States has really been a responsible country into tackling, you know, all the, 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 the pollutants and to being more effective into being a productive country with the least pollution. So uh, saying that we have the most, that's not true. You have not been in cities where I've been when you see a, 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 a thick, uh, you know, smoke on top of the city because of the pollutants. I've seen that in Mexico City. I've seen that in Caracas, Venezuela. Uh, you know, when you say, you know, you can see it on top of, of the city. There is no city in United States of America when you see a cloud, a yeah. great cloud of pollution. And that's a reality. So this country is the most responsible in that way. And we need to stop the narrative that, you know, we're going to either, you know, punish more people or give you something when we are doing great. And I believe that, yes, we need to move forward in as slowly and progressively into other forms of energy that will prevent and protect this planet. But we cannot force a change into this green energy that is, uh, that, first of all, you need oil to, to fabricate and then it's not um, recyclable and, and, and it's not reliable. That's the reality. And it's very expensive. Well, I, I think, uh, at least from the, the data that I'm able to see, it looks like in terms of per capita emissions, uh, the U.S. is number 11 in the world. We have some of the highest per capita emissions. China's half uh, of the per capita emissions that we have um, in terms, I mean, I think smog is a great example that you bring up that, you know, people talked about uh, L.A. and San Francisco and, and Houston, these big cities that had these smog clouds over them. That was until the government implemented uh, tailpipe emissions regulations that cleaned up the air. The Clean Air Act uh, is another good example of the government basically saying, hey, you know, we've, we've got to protect our air and our water. Um, and it was it was very effective. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we can agree that government regulation can sometimes lead to a better environment, uh, both literally um, and also a better social environment for people. Yeah, but over-regulating is actually killing uh, the industry, mm -hmm. destroying jobs in the United States. So what are some examples of regulations that you would want to get rid of? You give them to me. There is so, you know, the list is so long that it's very mm -hmm. easy, difficult for us to know how many, but when you hear the industry talking to you that, you know, and that's how prices, that's another reason how prices go up. The number of regulations that makes the product more expensive. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, what, like, that's what I'm saying. What are, what are just one, you know, one, one or two regulations that you would suggest getting rid of? Um, after all, if, you know, running for Congress, I'm sure you, you'd be legislating which regulations to get rid of. So what are some examples that you'd, you'd want to throw out to the audience? Hey, this regulation's terrible. Why do we have it? It's, it's the worst regulation. I can give you an example. Housing, for instance, um, liberals and conservatives can agree that there's probably too many zoning laws that make housing more expensive to build. That's one example. But what are some other examples that you would think of in terms of, you know, well, let me as tell an example you, uh, of overregulation? Um, I live in a city where we don't have zoning. For example, so that's not a problem in Houston. Houston, you right. can build whatever, whenever you want. We have your regulations made of floating, you know, and uh, I would say that's what one of the reasons, you know, like building in in California is very expensive because all the regulations due to, to earthquake. I would say that's necessary, that you need to build houses that are, you know, uh, prepared right. to act. Like you know, in Houston, you've got to build houses that can stand up to hurricanes, right? That's that's a reasonable regulation. And now raising the houses because of floating. That's a, a reasonable regulation, especially right. when what we used to think it was a 500-year floating now went down to probably 100 year because there is more floating due to the fact that there is more different structure. So then the land cannot absorb as much water as it used yeah. to be. So, you know, things change, life change, and because of life change, we need to adapt, and that I accept. But when you have regulations to the motor industry, that it makes it so hard to build up 
cars here and they have to go build it in Mexico because in Mexico, they don't have the same regulations. But then they turn around and bring it to the United States and sell it. I have a problem with that because that's how we have been killing jobs in the United States. So uh, that's one of the, the many examples of, of yeah. things that we should not be doing in the United States because it's, oh, well, we, we cannot build it here, but we're going to build it in Mexico. And then we lost the job, but we still bring it back. And, and that's things that, you know, right now the, uh, the, our farmers are struggling. And look, we're going to go through a food shortage. And uh, why we're not helping our farmers to, to, to produce? Because otherwise we're going to, what, starve the population? And coming from Venezuela, in Venezuela, that happened. And, well, and but in, in, in America, we have a ton of different agricultural subsidies to help farmers grow and, and produce. I mean, America is a net exporter of agricultural products. We feed the world, right? I mean, America is probably about the last place that would experience a food shortage. I mean, again, it seems like uh, it's it's hard to come up with a regulation that you'd get rid of. I, I only prod you about it because if that's a, a main part of how do we get things cheaper and get things produced in America. We're cutting I think off. It, oh no. Stream, can you hear me? Is my internet not working? Oh, I hear you. It was like a metal sound. I couldn't oh, hear Oh, no you. worries. No worries. I was just saying that, you know, it, it seems like um, you're having a hard time coming up with a regulation that you'd get rid of. You mentioned some regulations that we would agree are, are good to keep. Um, you know, you talk about domestic manufacturing. You are trying to ask me you know, it's so extensive the amount of regulations that are that you have to look every individual case at a time yeah. and look at the list of regulations. You know, it's very difficult. You know, you have to study every individual case yeah. at a time. And, and the list is, and when you ask why prices are so high, then you have to look into that. So, you yeah. know. No, I agree. About, it's it's a complicated issue. It's just, you know, it's, it's a it's very similar... complicated issue. No, especially is... when you pass laws with 900 pages. Or a thousand pages in Congress that not even the representatives are able to read the whole thing. And that's something that we need yeah. to change in Congress. We need to pass bills that treat one issue at a time. But we need to stop all these pork bills and, and uh, that when you're trying to pass, you know, uh, uh, balance the budget or, or making plans and you just throw everything in there with these pork bills that... Sure. We end up paying. We, the taxpayers, and we're, what we're doing is we're putting our children in a very bad position. Well, I think the U.S. debt sustainability is is actually pretty high. Um, when it comes to, you know, I think that if, for instance, if I said gang violence is a problem in America, I, I'm sure we would agree that is a problem. I could tell you several gangs in America. You know, I could the Crips, the Bloods, Pyrus, uh, you, you know, MS, uh, was it MS-13 MS or something like that? Right. Yeah. You know, all those I can name a few of them with regulations. I, I think it you know, you were saying it's a little bit harder. Let's talk about domestic manufacturing. Um, you know, we talk about we're talking about something different. But what have regulations to do with crime? I'm crime saying is if, a problem. if I if I said gangs are a problem, I should be able to name a few gangs because if I can't even name them, it's like, well, what the heck? How many is it really a problem? Then, you know, you say over regulation, you should be able to come up with a few regulations that are bad. Right. Well, that's. I should be able to. So, uh, you know, but there is so many that, you know, when when they're brought up, you're like, oh, my God. No, that's totally fair. That's totally fair. Well, it's, I wanted to talk about domestic manufacturing because I, I feel like, it. you know, would you agree that we're a little too, you know, partisanship has gotten a little crazy. We're, we're polarized right now. We should be less polarized. Is that something you'd agree with? We're extremely pol polarized. Yes, because and, we, and that's we a bad thing. common sense in this country. Right. And so we should be able to agree if we reasonably, we should be able to agree with the other side if they do something uh, that we might like. Right. And I think that one example that it sounds like you might support Biden on is a lot of these bills that he's passed recently include incentives for domestic manufacturing. For instance, he he requires that uh, if you're going to receive federal funds from a grant process, that a certain portion of your materials have to come from domestic Manufacturers. That's something that we can agree is probably a good thing, right? That's that's probably a good thing. Well, there you that's, go. Some bipartisanship. We can say Joe Biden did some good things. Uh, for instance, I think Trump. You know, I'm a I'm a good Democrat, but you know, Trump. I think that his tough on China stance probably made some sense. I didn't agree with the trade war the way he implemented it, but in general, America becoming tough on China probably 
a good thing. So that's something that I might be able to agree with Trump on. Let's talk about the 2020 election. Uh, who do you think won the 2020 election? Well, I would say that there are many, many questionable issues during that election that um, should have been allowed to be heard. And um, let me tell you, I'm going to put it to you in simple math. Okay? okay. There were 140 million people registered to vote. Okay. And uh, historically, not even 50% of their people registered to vote votes, isn't? Would you agree with me? Um, well, no, not really. Historically, we've we have had some pretty high voter turnouts in previous like, elections. How 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 can you tell me what's the highest turnout that you ever um, seen? I think that when Lincoln was reelected, it was like an eighty percent turnout. But that was it. Recently, I want to tell you in recent years. Tell me what's the highest. We have never reached oh, 50%. Rec recently, Isn't when it? Obama was elected, he, it was over 60%. Um, and Let's when, talk, I've been in the United States for the last 34 years. I've yeah. been, and I've been a citizen for the last 20 years. Okay. okay. Historically, you know, we don't reach not even close to 50% of turnout of the registered voters. And that true. But we, but we do though. That's what I was saying. Was when Trump was when? elected, when Trump when? was elected, it was over fifty percent. When Obama was reelected, it was over fifty percent. When Obama was elected the first time, it was over fifty percent. No, close to fifty percent, but never. It's when the closest we ever been to fifty percent. So my math is: we have one hundred and forty million people, one hundred and forty million people registered to vote. Okay. Okay. How many people voted for Joe Biden? Um, it, it's uh, 81 million, I think. Uh, I'm looking at it now. 81 million. 81 million. And uh, 72 million voted for Trump. Isn't 74 it? million, yeah. 74 million. Okay. Can you do the math? 74 million voted for Trump. 81 million voted for Biden. So that means that 155 million people went to vote. So that means that uh, 11 more million. So that means that not only we have a 100% turnout, we have another 11 million people that went to vote in 2020. That's a simple math to me. It doesn't make any sense. Well, some places. Have we are... ever reached 111% of turnout? Well, no, we, we've. Well, we didn't we didn't reach 111 percent of turnout in 2020 either. I mean, there's a quarter million. Simple math. Let's go back again. 140 million. Actually, it's more. It's 50. 140 million. You can Google this. 140 million people were registered to vote in the United States. Yet we have 155 million people went to vote. That means actually it's 50 million. 15 more million people voted in the 2020 election and this is simple math and nobody have talked about this but there wasn't a hundred there was way more than that i mean millions of extra people were registered to vote in 2020 because of you know being impassioned about this, this election 140 million were registered well, what what record what what are you citing what's your what are you what are you referencing when you say 140 million those are the records of registration to vote when you look for it, those are the records. I don't know. I just Googled number of registered voters in the U.S. and it, it doesn't appear to agree with you. I mean, it says 160. I mean, 2020, not today. Today we have more people. No, that it's, it says in 2020 there was 168 million. That's just a quick Google search. I'd be interested to hear your source. I mean, look, I, I with the with the election stuff, I mean, if you, do you think that you think it sounds like you think Donald Trump got a lot of fraudulent votes as well? Uh, well, what I'm telling you, no, I'm just telling you is 74 million because this is typical. If 74 million and you are 81 million, we, we have way more voters than people registered to vote. And that's what I said. That's why I say it's questionable. And that's what I say. It, it should have been close, you know, look closer, you know, and, and that's for me, it's a simple math. Mm hmm.
when, when you look at the numbers and nobody have looked at that that way. Well, and I, mean, I, I think that true. every I think Trump and his whole team, they they litigated the election fraud for like three months and they weren't able they, they weren't ever able to substantiate uh, their claims. I mean, isn't that some evidence that maybe the election was legitimate when all the courts that even the courts Trump appointed, you know, seem to agree the election was legitimate? Um, they were turned out of court. The, you know, in order for things to succeed, you need to hear both, both, both uh, parts, both sides of, of the aisle into this. And I come from, from the capital of the world of Chile, where it was invented and created in order for the communist regime to stay in power. And they have successfully done so. I'm not questioning any detail. I'm just telling you the numbers do not add up. And that's <laughs> well, that is Nah. Well, that, but to be fair, Carmen, that is, you're questioning it, right? I mean, if you're, we can't just say, oh, I'm, I'm just asking questions, right? Obviously, you're, you're calling into question the legitimacy of the votes that were cast. Um, you know, here's a question. Oh, there is, there is a lot. You're cutting, you're cutting, you're, you, again, the metal sound. I'm not, I'm not doing anything. I, do, do you hear me right uh, now? Now I hear you right. Suddenly, at times you cut off. No problem. Yeah, I was I was going to say um what wh what makes I mean do you think for instance did you run in a competitive primary do you think you legitimately won or do you think there was funny business in that primary? Well, I think that we need to take care well I was not opposed uh first of all okay. and uh, we are looking um in Houston and Harris County we're very active into election integrity right now uh so that's as important as campaigning and uh, there is groups that are closely watching election integrity. And as you know, the last legislature in Texas uh, passed, you know, new rules for elections. Uh, the voting uh, rolls were clear of a lot of dead people, people that also were not living in the state. So we're expecting, a, you know, a, a much better um, election this year, thanks to the measures that were taken by the legislature uh, last year here in Texas. Okay, so you think this time it'll be, you know, there'll be less funny business because of, you know, people watching it a little bit more closely. Maybe I agree with that. Um, when it comes to uh, the last thing I'll ask you about is this governor's race. Um, who are you going to vote for for governor? Of course, I'm going to vote for my governor, Greg Abbott. You're voting for Abbott. Why do you like Abbott over Beto? <sighs> Well, first of all, I believe in my constitution and respect my constitution and believe in all my rights, my First Amendment, my Second Amendment. And uh, Beto is, I'm a Republican. I will never vote for a Democrat. And then for somebody that is saying that he's going to take away our arms and somebody that is a fake Latino. Uh, so somebody <laughs> that already lies with that, if somebody lies from the get go to you, I cannot trust anybody that starts by lying. Well, do you, and, do you think Ted Cruz is faking being a white person because his real name's Raphael? He's not. He he he's not faking being a, a, a white person. He's always said it. His father is Cuban. I I just was with his father a little while well, wait, ago. But I but I don't think Beto claims to be Hispanic. That's just a nickname. Well, he tried, and until all was. Out in, he said, listen, one of the things he said when he was running for senator, he said that, oh, he gave a speech in his native language because he spoke Spanish. Th well, that's not from, his he's native. From El Paso. I mean, I'm not sure. Who knows? I, I, I that, mean, what language he's spoken in El Paso? It's, it, that's the United States of America. The, 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 the legal language in this country is English. Well, we don't okay? have like, any official like, language in this country. Uh -huh. you, there's no official uh, recognized language in America. You can speak any language in this country. Well, but, but the, the official language is English, and that's not his native language. It's not, though. Let me there, tell there's, you. there's no official language in America. Okay, well, you want to go that way. Is, is his mother speak Spanish or his father for him to claim that? Because I'm going to tell you, my children, uh, their first the first language they spoke 
was Spanish because I spoke to my children. I speak to my children in Spanish. That's great. That's a gift. I give to my children to be bilingual. Actually, they are trilingual because they also speak French, but that's not their native language. That's their mother tongue. Sure. That's how it's called, but that's not their native language. So how can he claim that his native language is Spanish when his father and his mother are are not Latinos or Hispanic, and he was born in El Paso. That he learned Spanish, I applaud it. Very good for him that he knows how to speak Spanish, but he cannot claim that that's his native native language. Well, we're we're coming up on thirty minutes. I've got one last question. We saw it on your Twitter, um, and we we wanted to ask the question: um, Do you think do you think Christianity should be the official recognized religion in this country, or? Uh, should we stick with kind of having a secular country? What do you think? This is a nation that was founded under God. And I believe as a Christian woman that I am, I'm a Catholic, that the moment that this country started to sidetrack and getting God out of our schools and out of our judiciary, that's when we started to have the problems we're facing now. We never saw gun violence in schools until God was taken out. So as a Christian woman, I believe in Christianity. And the problem is that while they are telling our children in schools that we cannot talk about Christianity, then they're allowed to talk about other type of other religions. And that's not right. If we're going to talk about religions, then we should talk about all religions. If we're going to teach religion in the schools, we should teach all religions. But we cannot have a special room for the Muslims, but completely forbid to talk about Christianity and forbid praying in schools. That's not right. So it sounds like you're saying the government shouldn't recognize Christianity as the official religion. You're just saying we got to respect all religions. We need to respect all religions, but this country, and you sit in Congress, is a nation under God. As a Christian, I will always preserve that and defend that. I always wear my cross, and I think that when we are with God, nobody can be against that. Well, sure, you know, Muslim people are, are follow one God, similar to Jewish people as well. I mean, you can swear into Congress on a constitution. You don't have to use any particular religious texts. Um, and so, and I respect it, that people see different forms of, 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 of you God. You respect that. That's all I, that's all I was And I respect at. all religions. I, you know, I have many friends, Jewish and Muslim. I respect all religions. I believe that believing in something and having respect for something is very important. But as a Christian, I will, and Catholic, I will always, uh, risk, you know, support Christianity. All right. Well, look, that's fair enough. Obviously, Ilhan Omar, you know, she wears a hijab. She is a Muslim practicing. And of course, she talks about that. Similarly to you, of course, if you want to talk about your faith, Joe Biden's a Catholic. You're both Catholics, it sounds like. So, you know, hey, that's uh, good that you share that quality with each other. Um, if uh, if that's it, I think we're coming up on the end of our time. I'd love if not you could attack. Tell- we should not attack like Hilang Omar does. She attacks Christians, and that's not right. <laughs> well, I don't think Ilhan Omar attacks respect, Christians. She has done it. I respect her. What has she said? But Don attacked us. Well, what she is, said something she about the she at some point she insulted the 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 Judeo Christian and you know she has made remarks in more than once about Christians about the Jews especially and and that's not right. Let's let's be respectful with all of that because the, the fact that as a Muslim she's today sitting in Congress she should be thankful and she should not be attacking other religions. Well, look, I, I think as as a, your, your, your potential future colleague, Ilhan Omar, I, I, I look forward to potentially seeing you two work together if you win this election. Um, the last thing I was going to ask is uh, I'd love it if you could tell people how they, if they're interested, how they could get involved with your campaign. Yes, go to uh, www.carmenforcongress.com. That's F-O-R, Carmen for congresscom They can follow me in Instagram, Carmen for Congress. They can follow me in Facebook, Carmen for Congress. And the only one is Twitter that is Carmen with a number four. Um, 
but all my accounts are FOR. Just go to my page. You can sign for volunteer. You can donate. Uh, that's very important, you know, in political campaigns. And I hope that to be able to represent you uh, in Congress. And it's very important for me, conservative values and small government, small expenditure. I believe in Christian values and family values. And it are very important. And parental rights also. So we, I believe parents should have the, the, the word and the say so and, and, and how to raise our children and to stop all this brainwashing madness that we're seeing nowadays in schools. Well, all right. It was great talking to you, Carmen. Good luck on the campaign trail. Um, and I believe you're also a small businesswoman. Good luck with your businesses Thanks. as well. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Thank you very much.